up, descendants? Kitty Bob here. Today I got the update video for the Super Census build. This is build 2.0. I did a lot of changes to that build. And on the previous one, I was able to hit for 1.3 million damage with a critical hit. Now, in the perfect conditions, we can do over 3 million damage. 3.2 million damage. So I'm gonna say twice as strong. I'm gonna say that it's way stronger than the Vestigial Organ build. And if the 41 million damage build didn't exist, this would be the strongest build for Glade, definitely. When that one gets nerfed, this is, this is gonna be the build to chase for. So I wouldn't actually chase for that build because we know that it's gonna get patched. I would actually recommend that you go for this one. It, it was a struggle for me to actually make this build. It took me the whole week to finally finish it. And I can say that it's totally worth it. As you guys were able to see at the start of the video, I killed the Devourer in a little bit over 30 seconds. I think it was like 35 or so. It's totally worth it. This build is not going to get patched, so you can actually chase for this and be completely safe. So let's get started with the build. For the weapon for this build, I'm using the Piercing Light as a previous build. The only difference for the affixes is that now I actually got critical hit rate. On the previous one, I don't even remember what I had. It was trash affix, but we actually were able to increase our cr critical hit rate with this affix. But that's huge. The base stats, as I said in the previous video, they're very high for this weapon. We have 44.16% critical hit rate, 1.2x critical hit damage, and we have 2.234 weak point damage. Overall, very strong weapon at base. Unique ability is not not that big of a deal. It's very good for lateral kills basically, but we're not using that weapon for that type of things. We're using this for void intercepts and we're, we're gonna be doing single target damage. So the unique ability for this weapon is not gonna increase our damage at all if we chase for the maximum level. I wouldn't actually recommend wasting your time on improving the unique ability for this weapon. Now for the modules for the piercing light, I made a couple of changes from the previous build. Before I was using slow art, which gave us 45% more firearm attack. Now we're using action and reaction, which is gonna give us 61% more firearm attack. So it's a 16% difference, totally worth it in my opinion. It's gonna give us 20% more recoil, but this is a bolt action rifle, so it's negligible in my opinion. The way that I use it, I'm rolling around like, like crazy. You were able to see, so... The recoil, not a big deal in my opinion. And the other most important change for this build is that we're using strength in first shot. After we reload, first shot's firearm attack plus 200%. And it has a 10 second cooldown. This is gonna be the game changer for the build. And this is gonna ma make perfect sense for this build, but we'll talk about it in a minute. For the first module, we have firearm critical hit uh, rate plus 33%, rifling reinforcement plus 32% more firearm attack, better concentration plus 37.2% more crit critical hit damage, action reaction, we already talked about this module, concentration priority is gonna give us plus 33.9% more critical hit damage. At the cost of taking more time to reload, 30% more time to reload. Strength and first shot. Weak point sight, 35% more damage to weak point. And lastly, weak point detection, 20% uh, more weak point damage and 1% more firearm attack. These modules right here, in my opinion, they're gonna be a game changer as well. We want to do as much critical hit hits as possible and we want to have our critical hit rate as high as possible because when we trigger strength in first shot we want to actually trigger a, a critical hit rate and that way we're going to be able to hit that 3 million damage we actually want to hit the critical the critical hit weak points they're also a very big part of the build because they're very easy to get uh void intercepts they usually have a huge weak point so it's Super easy to trigger this uh, extra damage that we get almost for free. But it's totally worth it to go for weak point damages. And firearm attacks, 
you want to increase your f base firearm attack as high as possible, and with this too, we we're able to increase it by 93%, which is huge. And with this modules, we're able to increase our DPS from 128,000 all the way to 485,000, which is massive, almost four times more damage than before. Our critical hit rate is now 57.36%. We now have a 2.053x multiplier for critical hit damage and 3.33 four times for weak point damage. Overall, we now have a very strong weapon and on the previous video I said that this was the strongest weapon on the, in the game and I stand by it. If you guys saw the 41 million damage build, they were using this weapon and it's totally worth it to chase for this piercing light in my in my opinion. Now for the modules for this build, the first one is super senses and this one is gonna fix our fire rate to 48 rounds per minute, which is not a big deal because that's actually the fire rate for the piercing light and it's also gonna increase the duration for our super senses from 5 seconds all the way to 8 seconds at base and we're able to bring it all the way up to 14.6 seconds and also with the modules we're bringing down our cooldown from 40 seconds to 12.9 seconds which is awesome that means that we're always gonna be able to proc our super senses whenever we want to then for this module we're using mirror maneuvering I upgraded it, so now I have 15 module capacity more. This is probably the best module in this slot right here. I love the, mo the mobility that, that it gives us. Uh, pretty much the best module in, in slot, in my opinion. Next up is the other spotlight of the build, walk a tight rope. When HP is 50% or lower, it's gonna increase our firearm attack by 30%. And you might think that 50% HP is a huge deal but with this build it's not gonna be as bad as it seems because we're gonna increase our hp with this two modules we're gonna increase our hp by 218.5 percent with this one and by 234 percent with this one it's gonna reduce our max mp by 15 percent but play doesn't use mp so it doesn't matter and it's also not gonna be as bad having 50% HP because we're gonna increase our defense with these three modules this one's gonna give us 160% more this one is gonna give us 89.8% more and this one is gonna give us 128.3% more when our shields are at zero but when since Glade doesn't have a shield this is perfect for her then we're using nimble fingers which is gonna reduce our skill cooldown by 25.6% MP conversion, same thing, skill cooldown, minus 36.5%, at the cost of our max MP being reduced by 15%. But like I said, doesn't matter, because Blade doesn't use MP. And we're gonna increase the duration of our skill with maximized duration by 40%. And lastly, skill extension, we're gonna increase the duration of super senses by 36.5% with this module right here. Now for the reactor and external components, the, I'm using the materialized singularity reactor. Honestly, for this build, the optimization doesn't matter that much because we're not using skills. I mean, we are we're using super senses and frenzied, but they're not affected by the skill power increase by the from this reactor and the boost ratios from the singularity or non-attribute skill powers. So it doesn't matter that much. What matters are the affixes, and you want to get skill cooldown in, in gold color. And I would actually recommend HP heal modifier as well, because since we're bringing our, our HP uh, to 50%, if you actually get in trouble, you want to heal as much HP from the blood vials and the health vials. For the external components, I'm using... This random one is going to increase our defense by 4,000 and our HP by 800. This one is going to increase our HP by 600. And I would actually recommend chasing something different for the affixes. And I'm using two parts of the Annihilation set, which is going to increase our skill duration by 5.7%. And this one is going to increase our HP by 600 and it's going to increase our gold drop rate. And our defense by 2,000. And this one is going to increase our HP by 400. 
and those two affixes, which don't matter that much. I, I would actually recommend chasing for something else, but this is what I had at the moment, and, and it is what it is. But I would actually recommend chasing for these two parts of the Annihilation set. Now, the way that this build works is, first of all, we want to reduce our HP to 50% or less. And that's that's to trigger the walk a tight rope module from our descendant, which is gonna give us 30% more firearm attack. Now that it's uh, triggered, what the next thing that we want to do is reload our weapon, and that's to trigger the strength and first shot module from our weapon. After we do, we trigger super senses, and we go for the damage. We're gonna wait for the super senses to finish and after we it does we're gonna reset the the rotation we're gonna reload the weapon we're gonna cast super senses and we're gonna start all over again 14 seconds of damage and after it finishes as soon as you see one one ball getting consumed that's when you actually want to stop reload your weapon and start the rotation again and that's a super senses 2.0 build descendants it's probably not as good on consoles, and the reason is because we're going to be using a sniper rifle and chasing for the weak points might actually be a little bit more difficult. And that I would actually recommend rolling with this build because Super Senses is going to make us extremely slow. That's why you see me rolling around like crazy on the video. Because I actually want to have a little bit of mobility. But overall... I'm gonna actually go ahead and call this build the strongest one in the game after the 41 million damage build gets nerfed. I highly recommend that you actually chase for this build. And not too bad in my opinion. You can actually use it for different descendants as well. That we'll we'll talk about in a different video. And that's all for this video, descendants. If you think that I could have changed something in the build, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you think about the build in general. If you like it if you don't like it let me know i'm very interested and yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you want to see more videos for the first ascendant subscribe to the channel thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one later